Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel. And today I bring you once more this week's chapter of One Piece 981 of its name, Joining the Fight. And today we, don't not, we do not have a cover story for the overall covers arc of Beiji. We have instead a fan. Fantastic, fantastic color spread showing some of the straw hats. In fact, the six, no, not the six because Brooke's there, but the six original plus Brooke. So we have Luffy, Zoro, uh, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, Chopper, and then we have Brooke just in a club. Sanji showing off his DJ skills. Very, very cool. It's very colorful. It it spans just a few colors, like blueies, oranges, and yellows and stuff. But it's really, really colorful. So yeah, it's a it's a cool cover page. It's one of those that you really, really like. And of course, Manga Plus had to ruin the double page as they do. But that's beaten and and whatnot. So let's move forward. The chapter picks up right after where the last one ended. And I just gotta say, the thing I like about this chapter actually is that it it's so nonchalant. Like what he introduces, he introduces in a very non-complicated way. Like we will see further ahead, but like we have the introduction of one of the numbers and it's just like, okay, someone starts beating the ground with a mace, boom, one of the numbers. And I was like, okay, one of the numbers. Later on, when you know who appears, you just, you see, you, he starts flying and you're like, wait, is that him? And then all of a sudden, that's him. And in the end, there's the two others and you're like, Okay, it's, you see, it's sort of like, not that there's any lack of preparation, mind you, that it's not that, but uh, it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of a little bit too sudden, like, we saw the numbers before, we heard their laughter, and we saw their shadowy figures before, so it's not like we were not expecting to see them in, in the action. And of course, we knew that Nekomamushi had gone to find uh, Marco, and we were sort of quote unquote expecting him to arrive. He said he was not going to come, but now he's here. So I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say that all of us believe that he was not going to come. I say that. I was expecting him not to come, but at the same time I wanted him to come. Sort of like that. I hope I make myself clear, because I'm I'm very happy that he's here. Marco is one of those characters that the more I think about his powers, and the more I think about his situation, the more I like him. Because this guy literally got everything he loved ripped from him. His family... Well, not entirely, but I'm sure that some of the white beard remnants didn't got as lucky as he did, sort of. So he lost his quote-unquote father, he lost one of his brothers, m maybe many more, we don't know. A lot of the black beard, oh, the black beard, oh my god. A lot of the white beard allies were killed by Weevil, so I believe... 15 or 16 of the Allied crews? Uh, 15 or 16 of the 50-something Allied crews were already killed by Weevil, so... That makes at least 15 times a lot of members, people that Marco lost on his family. And he still went and got to Whitebeard's Island, to help it out. So that's really cool. But moving back a little bit, we get a sort of a conclusion to this kid and the poo scramble. It was not a proper fight, as I was sort of expecting. This was not 
the proper fight. But I guess this is as far as we go on the Kid versus Apu. Like, I don't think that Kid and Apu will face off again. I think that whoever will defeat Apu will be someone different. So, I guess we can check out the Kid versus Apu on my list because. Honestly, if it was to be done already, it would have been done. Of course, if it was done now, Apu could just go to a doctor and get healed and get ready for the final battle anyway. But I don't think that Oda would have anything to gain from doing that. So if Apu is not done now, he'll not be done in by kid in the future. I think. It's my opinion anyway. And... Uh, yeah, so there's some bands that are going back and forth. Apu is really delusion delusional when it comes to the idea of the alliances. He does not believe that an alliance can actually work. Which make the, this sentence of his, this whole dialogue of his, like what kind of alliance between pirates is ever gonna have a happy ending? Now, this plays into a an old doubt, it's not really a theory, it's a doubt that myself, and I believe many others of the community have, about law. Like, it was all fun and games when back in Punk Hazard, law was like, oh, let's form an alliance. And I was like, uh-huh. Sure, sure, an alliance with you, the surgeon of that. How convenient. And throughout Punk Hazard and throughout Res Rosa, throughout the beginning of Dress Rosa anyway, uh, but throughout the beginning of Dress Rosa, I was like, yeah, this guy, this is not going to end well, is it? And I was like, okay, okay. But then we got to his flashback, and I was like, well, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And then we got to the end of Dress Rosa, and I was like, oh, okay, Mr. Law, I'll bite. I'll bite. Let's, let, let's see how far you can... Let's see how far you can go. And then Zo came, and Whole Cake Island came, and the Reverie, and then we arrived at one. And I was like, okay, sir, this will be your final test. If you can survive this, you can survive everything. <sighs> Apu is right, in a sense, because, I mean, after everything is said and done, they are all still vying for the same thing the One Piece. Like, they're all gunning to be the King of the Pirates. It's not like they can decide on who's the Alliance leader, and whoever is the Alliance leader will be the King of the Pirates, and then the others will be the Yonkos or something, or will be the Commanders. No, it's not like that. They are all vying for the same thing. The Alliance between them is just a tenuous thing that allows them to somehow work together towards an objective. But Apu didn't even want to consider that because <coughs> he thinks outright that they would not be able to to fight against the Yonko on their own. And let's be honest, he is correct. Like Luffy, the Straw Hats and the Heart Pirates alone, two crews alone, wouldn't be able to take on the Beast Pirates the Samurais. Let's leave out the Big Mom Pirates for now. Let's leave them out. Imagine Wano, Kaido and Orochi's forces, Beast Pirates and the Rogue Samurais and Ninja versus the Straw Hats and the Hard Pirates. There is no way that it would happen. No way. Luffy and Law needed, will need and are needing the help of the Minks, the Samurais, some remnants of the Whitebeard Pirates, as we're seeing here. We don't know how many more there are. We know that Marco and Izu have arrived, but no one else. And God knows, or Oda knows, just how will they be able to get out of this pickle. So, and as I've been stressing out a lot, sacrifices will have to be made. You guys know that I was already a bit pissed when Pound appeared alive in the cover story. I can only hope to God 
that Pedro is not alive. And it's not like that I want someone to die. But if you tell me that they face off against two Yonkos, a Shogun who, with a military force behind him, and no one gets severely injured or dead, honestly, I will not believe it. And just don't just make it the random goons that are hexed. Like, make it someone big. One of the three one of the things and I can't believe I'm gonna say this, one of the things I praise and at the same time not praise, uh, Naruto's last arc, the, the big ninja war, for doing, and it should have done more, was the fact that Kishimoto had the balls to kill one of the main characters. And I don't mean main as in Naruto, Sakura or Sasuke. I mean main as in the, Kano the Kanoha 11. Or the Kano... Uh, no, not the Kanoha 11. They were not 11. They were more. The, Kano the Kanoha 12. Which was Neji. And to be honest, I think that more should have gone. Like, Shippuden was riddled with a lot of impactful and meaningful deaths. And yes, though some of those deaths were kind of shat upon with the Edo Tensei, Edo Tensei wasn't really a thing that was permanent. Well, except for, for Madara, but we don't talk about Madara. So, yeah. But yeah, we had Asuma, we had Jiraiya, we had Neji, we had Itachi. Like, Sure, many of these were then brought back with the Edo Tensei. The only one that was not brought back was Jiraiya, which I actually thought it was a very lost, a big loss of an opportunity there. Because imagine, imagine Jiraiya appearing in front of Tsunade and Naruto, and they were forced to fight him, and Tsunade delivered the killing blow. That would be sick. But this is not Naruto. This is One Piece. So yeah. Apu is very much right in my opinion. And in actuality I think I... Yeah, I might do a video on this. Because I think that this warrants his own video. But let's go. So Queen gives the order to... To actually kill. License to kill the, the supernovas. Because some guys just say, okay, these guys... It's all well and good that you want them alive, but I mean, we can't do it. They're just too strong and we're just good. So King Queen is like, you know what, just kill them. And yeah, out of nowhere, one of the numbers appears. The number eight, Hacha. I gotta say, eh. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, honestly. I. He, he's one of those guys that it's very much in older style. He's a goofy guy. He's apparently bigger than a giant. So if we take into consideration that giants normally have 12 meters or something, I believe Dorian broke yeah around the, that number. This guy might be a little bigger, like even bigger than Kaido if if this is to be believed, even bigger than Big Mom that way, so... Because Big Mom is like 8 meters tall, so yeah, and she's not even giant level yet, so... She's big, but not giant level. So yeah, then Luffy appears and kicks an arrow, which apparently explodes, so that was some big-ass arrow. And yeah, they get together and they start running. We see a place of the castle that's still unaffected by the battle, which is very fun, because you see in the background explosions and, and fighting going on, and then you have some guys just eh, just just drinking and chatting and laughing in, the, in another part of the castle, which is pretty good. Um, another thing I didn't enjoy in this chapter, and I've seen a lot of people who didn't enjoy this, but it was predictable, is the fact that if you cover your ears, a puss attacks have no effect, which makes sense, but then again, it takes everything from the character. It's it's a real it's a it's a really severe weakness. Like I mean, sh 
sure if you ha if you cover your ears with your hands, you can't really fight. But we've seen in a previous arc that they can cover their ears with anything else. Like they use the same trick to avoid getting knocked out by Big Mom's hockey with not really mochi balls. Mochi balls was what um, Tatsukuri did for his siblings, but they covered their ears with something. So, again, it's a bit of a bummer because it really is a crippling weakness in a poo's fruit. If everyone knows that, then he's fundamentally useless now because all his attacks are sound based. If you can't hear the sound, it can't affect you. So, there's really. This, however, opens the precedent for possibly Brook being his opponent because even though Brook can hear, he doesn't have ears. So, how feasible are the attacks to, to hit him? So, yeah, it's another point for discussion. So, yeah, we get a bit of a backstory, and this was interesting. We get a bit of a backstory for how Killer had to eat his devil fruit. So, basically, it was Orochi who gave it to him, and in exchange, it would allow him to save kids. So, he was kind of wrong there. So, poor, poor killer. Like, yeah, poor kid. Poor killer, not kid. Poor killer. I, I really hope we get to learn a bit more about killer and kid. Like, how they two got together, even if it's in, a, in an SBS. I, I don't mind. Or one of the novels, you know, because we had Ace's novel, uh, Law's novel is to be released or already released. So there's that. And we we can have a kid, a kid novel after all this. We can have it. I, I'm okay with that. Because in Law's novel, we we got to know how he met with uh, Beppo, Sachi and, and Penguin. So that, that'll be interesting. Okay, then we get a glimpse of who's who and his former crew. Wow, that somehow... that somehow rhymes. And they all have a sort of a... cat get-up. So, with that said, I believe that who's who most likely has an Echo Neko no Mi. And I don't actually know which fruit I attributed to him. No, but I I attributed the, the, the saber tooth fruit to either Ulti or Black Maria because of that old Queen theory. But this being said now, I believe that Who's Who is probably the most likely candidate to have the saber tooth fruit or a Neko Neko fruit. He will have a cat fruit, so either Either it's either it's uh, the saber tooth or any other fruit. It's it doesn't matter, but it is from the getup of all the members of his crew. It's most likely an echo economy. So he confirms or he says that well, Queen has someone he wants to kill, and he says, well, so do I. Does he mean that he wants to kill Queen? Or will it somehow end up being the same person? Because I theorize that Queen actually knows about Yaz Drake and, and is actually gunning to kill him. So maybe who's who is thinking the same thing or who's who wants to kill Queen? Which I would very much put into consideration. He wants to be an all-star after all, so... Who knows? So yeah, we get to see Big Mom again on blinders and saying, uh, telling something about her ship, which is about to arrive, as we'll see later. And we see more of the infiltration forces. We, we see their advances 
to the castle and they run into something unexpected which is kind of cool because it just shows that it's not as easy to infiltrate a Yonko's place as that and so they get to a part of the mansion that was not in the plans which is Black Maria's they call it pleasure hall in the manga plus translation but it's a brothel it's it, it's a brothel so yeah and Sanji gets all over it but alas the pleasure hall is empty and they decide to split up because if the if the pleasure hall is empty that means we can go march through it so divide and conquer I mean it makes sense and so they go but out of nowhere someone starts opening the window and everyone jumps into the water except poor old Chopper and who's on the other side if not Big Mom and yeah this is a very funny thing Chopper is just stooped there when everyone jumped in the water he's just stooped there <laughs> Big Mom looking at him like oh? Like, she has no expression, and that's terrifying. Because she has no expression, and poor Chopper is just like... I'm so dead! Ah. Chop poor Chopper. But hey, then we go to the... Once again, to the falls outside Wano. And... The big mum pirates are... Once again, trying to climb the waterfall and they they would have made it i mean they they would have made it if it were not for a certain bird in the whose name is freaking marco the phoenix and i gotta say his design didn't change all that much he's still wearing similar clothes but you gotta admit marco rocks glasses like a champ like I gotta say Marco with glasses versus Marco with no glasses I mm, the difference is abysmal and it suits him really well this is turned into a fashion show but man this is he looks really cool and there he goes Phoenix brand on the Queen Mama Shanter and the big vampires are blasting off again and they blast off to the end of the waterfall. Poor things, you gotta feel sorry for them. So yeah, and something that I didn't realize before, because I thought the, ship, the ships were inversed, but no, on the background is Nekomamushi's ship. On, in the front panel, in the front plane, it's the Queen Mama Shanter falling, so I thought it was the other way around, but now that I analyze it more, it's Nakamabushi's ship that's on the background. Ah, This was cool. This... This was cool, I gotta say... As I said, it was a bit out of nowhere. When I saw, when I saw the first images of the chapter, and when I heard the first rumors and people were saying, oh, Marco's going to appear. And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, I believe it when there's images. That's normally how I do it or very specific sources. But yeah, I was like, Marco out of nowhere. I mean, I was happy for it. I was, I was really happy for it. But then I was like, yeah, there's no way that's going to happen. Come on, man. It turns out it did. And turns out Marco the Phoenix is here. And I am so happy for it. I hope the next chapter we delve a little bit more into him and Nekomamushi and Izo. Izo is here as well. And we'll see who else is here. Because we have a chapter next week. It's the first break of the break cycle, and this is exciting. It probably might show that schedule is gradually returning to its 
three to four week following and then break and then three to four weeks break three to four weeks break the normal schedule we see we can only hope or at least two break two break two break if if we are to start a little bit slower that might be a good option instead of one break one break one break we have two break two break so yeah some more interesting things that i wanted to point out Flampay has a dialogue here that really the all some of Big Mum's children have it have this bit of the, of dialogue. Like one of I don't know who this guy is, Tablet, I think it's Tablet, yeah. He goes like, well, this whole alliance with the with the beast pirates is completely irrational, completely bonkers. What is Mama thinking? And Smoothie's like, don't care about it, Mama decided we need to follow. But then Daifuku goes like, yeah, but forget the alliance, we're all here for one thing, which is Triad said. And Flampe then goes like, I don't really care about all that, I just want to be Kaido's new favorite. Now, why would she say that? Flampe appears to have an infatuation with herself, for starters, but also for the fact that she needs to be praised, she needs to be sort of adored or something. But what if this means that she could be the one? I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't believe I'm going to say this. Let, let me just check something really quick to avoid getting this video demonetized by by uh, okay uh, she's 15 oh god I'm gonna say it anyway uh, what if she's the one that's gonna get married to Yamato like because what other purpose could this have beyond that like why would she want to be Kaido's new favorite? Like, why did she even think that Kaido would pick her? A member from an allied crew, not even his own crew, but from an allied crew. To be his favorite. Like, and favorite in what sense? Does she really think that Kaido will just go like, Oh, you're so cute. You're gonna be my pet or something. You're the size of, of, my, of the point of my finger. You're the size of the point of my finger. No, not really, but you you understand the comparison. I don't know. When I read this, my mind immediately went, what if she's Yamato's bride-to-be? If there's even going to be a, a wedding, pay, in pay that in mind, but... You know, it's it's a weird line and out of context... It really probably doesn't mean anything. It's just Flampe with an infatuated ego just going about. And I really like how when Pero Sparrow realizes that there's someone coming, it's like a, a, someone flying and coming towards them. And he goes like, oh no, King, not again. But then he's like, no, it's not him. It's not him. <laughs> And then Marco is just so nonchalant. Oh yeah, so it turns out that that the alliance is actually true. So the story, yeah. Oh god, are you kidding me? Not again! <laughs> oh, this is so cool. And I really like Marco's last line. The next time you show up, the times may have moved on a bit more than before. And I think that this means that the Big Mom pirates will be out of commission during the whole fight because let's let's take into consideration that it took them this long to get back in the waterfall days have passed ever since that ever since they fell the first time days have passed since then so they will not return like really they will not return unless they get they somehow get help which it's another thing that i found really interesting why can't they use the water elevator 
just like Apu used with the numbers. Because if the elevator can transport a ship big enough to carry the numbers, surely it would be big enough to carry the Queen Mama Shunter, which is a big ship, I know, but my point, my point remains. If the elevator can carry a ship big enough to carry the numbers, surely the Queen Mama Shunter could be able to ride it. But no! Why not? Like, maybe Kaido wants to keep the elevator a secret from Big Mom just to have some leverage? Just not to wholly facilitate the entrance, you know? We're allies, but come on, let's... Let's not show our cards here. Which is really weird, but that can be a way in which they can still appear and be by that, by the elevator, because honestly, for me, I'm okay with them not showing up. I am wholly okay with that. Like, really, I do not mind them not showing up. However, if they do, it will make for more of a... for more of a fest, this battle, but I don't think that they, they need to appear. For me, it's okay if they don't appear, but then again, if you don't deal with them now, we'll have to deal with them later and it'll just postpone the Big Mom Pirates thing. So, yeah. I mean, we don't really know how the fate of the Yonkos will be decided. Like, will they die? Will they leave? We don't know. Like, we know that Luffy doesn't kill anyone, but... I'm not saying that Luffy has to kill them. Again, as I said way long ago in my in my When is a Young Code Truly Defeated video, which by the way I should revise probably because it's been a it's been a very long time. I'm probably I probably should revise that video. But um, for me, like it's either just a big big defeat, like the kind that their pride is so wounded that they don't come back from it or it's that like you can't expect someone like big mom or kaido to just go and say well you know what you defeated me that's okay I'll, I'll back down they won't like they're always trying to get back on things so unless they die the crew will lose 80% of their fighting power with just the head alone. I'm not saying that Big Mom's children are weak, by no means. But when we consider the Big Mom Pirates, for instance, I can comfortably say that 60% or 70% of their power is Big Mom. Alone. Like, sure they are strong individually and as a group. We saw that by the Revenge Army back in Whole Cake Island. But if they lose Big Mom, it's no way that Pero Sparrow could have a crew that would be on the same level as Big Mom's. Because they would not have Big Mom. But that's a topic for another time. I'm just happy that Marco showed up. I really, really like Marco and I want to see more of him. So, mm, yay Marco, you're back. And so are we for another week of videos, another week of content for you guys. So, if you enjoyed this video and my content in general, please leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment as well. We are on our way to the 50 subscribers, we are at 45 now, so halfway there, halfway there. We were nearly there, halfway, I mean halfway between the 10 that were left when I started asking this, so halfway through the 10, so 5 more to go. So, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow for another video of Minecraft Harry Potter. I'm really, really enjoying that, that series. So, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.